While debugging a language such as JavaScript and VS Code, you can use inline breakpoints to break not only at a specific line, but at a specific expression on that line. This can be especially helpful when you're dealing with things like for statements, where multiple expressions appear on a single line, or when you're debugging minified code. To get started with inline breakpoints, first I'm going to create a normal line breakpoint here at the start of the for statement, then press F5 to start debugging. This is a node program, so I'll select node here. And you can see I've hit this normal breakpoint. Now, this is, a, again, just a normal breakpoint at the start of the for expression. If I hover over i at this point, you can see i is undefined because it does not run anything in here. If I then go and I step into the body of the for statement here and say continue, you can see that that breakpoint has not been hit again. Again, that is because the breakpoint is conceptually set at the start of the for statement. And even though execution flows back into the conditional here and back into the increment phase, which are also on line three, we have not hit that breakpoint again because it is set at the start of the for statement. Now we can use inline breakpoints to fix this. Let's go and press F5 to start debugging again. I'll say node again here. And when I hit this breakpoint on this line, you can see I have a bunch of little grayed out breakpoints on the line here. And those are indicating the possible locations of inline breakpoints. So you can see I have one for the conditional here and I have one for the increment phase. If I want to break during the conditional phase of evaluation, so before the conditional is eva evaluated here, I'm just going to click on that little grayed out breakpoint there. Now when I step into the body of this function and then say continue, you can see that I've actually gone and hit the breakpoint again, and it has hit the breakpoint for the conditional. If I hover over i at this point, I can go and inspect it and say, oh, i is 1. If I say continue again, I can go and see that i is 2 at this point. So again, I'm hitting the breakpoint every time this conditional is being evaluated, thanks to that inline breakpoint that I created. Now, if I want to disable the inline breakpoint, all I have to do is click on the little inline breakpoint again here, and now it's been disabled. So that's how you can manage inline breakpoints after creating a line breakpoint, but you can also create inline breakpoints directly. Say, for example, we wanted to break inside the body of this arrow function. Now, if we set, created a normal line breakpoint on line 4 here, it would be evaluated at the start of the line. So we'd hit that breakpoint before the call to call with. We can use an inline breakpoint inside the body of the arrow function here to break inside of that instead. I'm just going to place my cursor where we want to create the inline breakpoint. And then I'm going to use Shift F9, which is bound to the inline breakpoint command. And that will go and create an inline breakpoint directly. Now, if I continue here, you can see it is on line 4, but we're actually broken inside of the arrow function body. So if I hover over x, for example, you can see that x has actually been defined because we are inside of the arrow function body here, and we're able to use Shift F9 to create that inline breakpoint directly.